In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up NAN locally and connect it with MCP servers. We will go step by step from installations to adding credentials to building a working AI power workflows using MCP tools like Tably. Now, if you're new to model context protocol or MCP or wondering how it works, you can check out this video here for an explanation by tapping the card above to check it out. And if you ever wonder how to use NAN to build an AI agent, you can also check out this video for a full walkthrough. Now, with that being said, Let's get into it by setting up NAN on our local machine. To get started with NAN on local machine, so we're going to navigate to the NAN repository. And if we were to scroll down, you can see that there is a quick start section. So there are two ways that we can start NAN on our local machine. One is using NPX, or we can also use Docker to deploy NAN on our local machine and be able to access the editor on this port. So for simplicity, we're just going to use the NPX route. And the requirement for this is that you have to have the Node.js installed on your local machine. So go ahead, just click on this link and you can be able to follow the instructions to install Node.js on your machine. And once you've done so, we're just going to copy this command. And currently, you can see that I have a terminal open. I'm just going to paste this command, and it will basically install NAN and start a NAN on our local host port. All right, so now you can see that it has been installed, and it's accessible to this port. So here you can see I just navigate to the local host 5678. And here you can see this is the NAN page, which we can be able to log in. So we just have to set up the owner account. Okay, so once you've done so, this is what we got. So this is the overview, and you can see that we have a local version of NAN on our machine. All right, so now to add MCP onto the NAN workflow, what we can do is we're just gonna click on settings, and then here we're just gonna click on community notes, and then we're going to click on install a community nodes. And here we're just going to paste the npm package name, which is the NAN nodes MCP. And we're just gonna click on install. Okay, so now you can see that it has been installed. And so now we can be able to add our MCP server onto our NAN workflows. So if I were to go back to settings, create a new workflow, and I'm just gonna click on a new step here. If I were to search for MCP, you can see that we have MCP client showing for the workflows. All right, so here you can see I have a simple workflow right here, which I have a chat, and the chat is connected to the AI agent, and this AI agent is using a large language model that I selected, and if I were to say hello, and it's gonna say, hello, how can I assist you today? So that's the response that we got from the large language model. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add MCP to our workflow. So to do so, we're gonna click on tools, and we're gonna search for MCP. Here we have MCP client tools, we're gonna click on this. And here we're just gonna click on select credentials, we're gonna create a new credentials here. So credentials is going to be a MCP server. All right, so let's say we found an MCP server, for example, this one right here. So if we were to scroll down for this MCP server, you can see that this is how we can be able to set up the server configuration. So we have our command and arguments. And if we were to come back to NAN, you can see that this is our command and this is our arguments. But we also have to set up the environment variable, which is this one right here. So we have to input our API key. And this is where we're gonna put the environment variable here. So once you have the account for this application, you will basically have a API key. So once you have the API key, you're just going to copy this and same thing that's what i did and back to the nan you can see that there's a an environment variables uh, and then for the environments here we're just going to put the api key which is the same as what we have here and then we're just going to put the api key at the back so once we have this we're just going to click on save now we can also rename this module as well so for example i want to change this to be mcp topley and since the operation here is going to be list tools so we're just going to change this to uh, list tools right so it has the ability to get all the tools that it has for the tavli so we're just going to rename this so since we have the ability to get all the list of tools we also need to specify that inside of our ai agents so right now you can see that for the source of prompt is just directly from the user message we also need to add a few things for the prompt so i'm just going to change it to define below and here we're going to drag the message the chat input here and we also need to write choose uh the right tool based on the user input and we're just going to say this is going to be the user input and we're going to choose the right tool for this so i'm just going to click on save so to test this here you can see this is my request i want to use tavli tool to search for crypto price i'm going to send this message you can see that it's currently getting the data and here you can see this is the result the mcp tavli list tools will basically give us the right tool which is tavli search to find the crypto price that we're looking for. And here you can see the result. It also mentioned that. So based on the request to search for crypto prices using Tavli tools, the appropriate tool from Tavli will be Tavli search. So you can see that basically we have the MCP server working. But what if we want to actually use MCP to actually search the crypto price? So here I'm just gonna use the MCP client tools again. 
So to do so, you can see that for the MCP client, we're going to use the same credentials that we connected. Here, we're just going to change the operation to be execute tools, right? And then in terms of the tool name here, we're just going to use the from AI, which will basically let the large language model to define the tool name. So we're just going to say from AI here, and we're just going to pass the placeholder or the key. And here, we're just going to say tool. Okay. And basically you can see for the list tools here, it will basically uh, give us the tool name. And then we're going to use the large language model that we're going to pass to the execute tools. So here we're also going to change the name for this. So it's going to be MTP Tavly execute. So we're going to rename this. And in terms of the tool parameters, we're just going to let the AI model to define the parameters here. So we're just going to click on this. And here you can see it's defined automatically by the model. So I'm going to clear the chats and basically going to send a request one more time to ask about the crypto price. And let's see how it respond. Okay, so here you can see we have some results. So here are the resources to check the crypto prices and we can also be able to see the logs. So here you can see in terms of the history, you can see the first we have the list tools, which will give us the Tavli search. And then it used the large language model to basically define the right tool. And in this case, the right tool is Tavli search. And then the tools parameter is going to be this query right here. And in terms of the parameters, you can see we have the current crypto prices and the search depth is basic. Okay. And here are the outputs. Let's also try something else. What is the price of Ethereum to USD? And here you can see we have a result. And if we were to look at the input for the Tavli ex execute, we same thing, we have the Tavli search. Um, as well as the parameters, which is the current Ethereum price in USD. And this is basically the output from Tavli after it does the search on the internet. And then we also have our large language model will basically format the response to what we see here. All right, so that's basically it for this video. And you can see that this is how we basically set up NAN inside of our local machine, as well as how we can be able to add MCP servers onto our NAN workflows. Now, if you want to check out more videos on NAN workflows, please check out these videos here. If there's any workflows that you're building with MCP server, please comment down below. And if you do found this video helpful, please like this video and subscribe for more future contents. Other than that, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.